Hey everyone, this is Dylan here and today I'm going to go over how to become a microbiologist. So I would say there are three main routes to becoming a microbiologist. I'm not saying it's set in stone and it depends what country you're in and your circumstances, but I think it's good to kind of, if you're planning your future, to have these three different routes because they are a little bit separate and um, they do practice in different industries. So I would have a general idea of these. So firstly, you have the medical or clinical route I would describe, and that's gonna be a microbiologist that practices in a healthcare setting essentially, so in a hospital, in a clinic, and it's generally quite well regulated. And then you have the non-clinical route. So that's gonna be a microbiologist practicing outside of those settings, and for which there are jobs that include like uh, brewery related jobs, agricultural, or pharmaceutical. So you can have microbiologist positions there that will be a separate route essentially because you won't have the stringent requirements that the healthcare setting has. And then thirdly, you have the research or academic route, and that's gonna be you know very esoteric, very specialized and niche, and basically requires a lot, of, a lot of studies in regards to bachelor's, master's, and PhD. So for the medical or clinical route, I've also differentiate this into two separate routes. So depending on what country you're in, um, the governing body there for the healthcare industry or um, public healthcare will have its certain requirements for what you need to practice in a hospital. So if you want to do microbiology in a hospital, you have to follow what they say. So in the US, uh, different states have different requirements, but the strictest of states will require um, ASCP certification as a medical laboratory scientist, for example, or you can specifically specialize in microbiology, but that would be through ASCP as well. And so for their requirements, it's very strict and you have to follow uh, the different routes that they give to you. So the main route, for example, would be um, a specific degree that is uh, recognized. And um, also that would include an internship in a clinical setting for generally a year. And then with that, you would take the ASCP test, and then that would confer eligibility to practice in a healthcare or clinical setting. And then there is the non-ASCP route. So there are states, and I'm sure maybe other countries, but most countries are generally quite well regulated, but there are states that do not require um, ASCP certification. And um, I guess for them, you know, if to get in, you would just have to apply to the job and have some experience, obviously, in microbiology but um, you don't actually need the ASCP certification in all states in the US. As I said, generally in most other countries, uh, they are gonna have their specific uh, governing body that regulates healthcare, and they will have um, certain requirements that you will need to become a microbiologist. So the second route is gonna be the non-clinical route. So this would include jobs, for example, in the pharmaceutical industry, which would be called a QC microanalyst, or uh, in an agricultural setting in regards to uh, plant microbes, or in a brewery setting, for example, responsible for the yeast aspect of brewing. So for this route, it's not gonna be strict in terms of your educational requirements like the clinical or medical route would be. So these jobs generally, when they're hiring, they're gonna look for that educational background. Roughly in microbiology, it can be you know food science, for example, if you're at a, few, a food lab, that was another option as well. Or if you're in a pharmaceutical setting, they'll be looking for, you know, some type of microbiology experience during your studies, uh, and also maybe some type of internship or placement or co-op co you did, or obviously if you're a bit older than uh, previous work experience. So that's what they'll be looking for when they hire for these positions, but they don't have these strict requirements that the healthcare industry does when it comes to being able to practice. So this, you know, non non-clinical route is going to be fairly open to people that maybe didn't want to know what they wanted to do when they were younger, you know, because the clinical route, you know, you basically would have wanted to do that uh, for your first degree uh, and you would have wanted to know what you want to do when you grew up. Um, so this non-clinical route is quite open to people. As I said, you know, you just need that educational experience. It can be tangential. Uh, microbiology experience, you know, doesn't, ha doesn't have to be a strict microbiology degree, you know, to get a job at these places, uh, but they do want some type of experience generally. So the third route to becoming a microbiologist, I would say, is this academic or research route. 
So this would include people that at least have a master's degree and probably a PhD. And they would be basically, you know, collecting samples and, you know, sequencing these uh, new species. Essentially, you know, they'd be writing journal, journal articles uh, describing, you know, what they sequenced, which could be posited as new species. Um, yeah, very niche, very specialized, very technical. And it's, you know, the name says, speaks for itself. You know, this is the academic route um, and basically involves, you know, writing journal articles, for example. Uh, working for a university most likely um, and you know it doesn't really relate to the clinical route because you know generally these people will not have the, the stringent requirements when it comes to practicing in a healthcare setting even though they have a PhD that's you know you have to follow what the governing body in your country says for the clinical or healthcare route and most of the time it won't align for these folks and it's not your typical non-clinical route uh, I, that's why I've separated it into this third route because it is very specialized and uh, academic, you know, most likely PhD. Uh, I've described it as a separate route and they would be doing separate things than a typical, you know, employee would at a pharmaceutical company or a brewery or, you know, a food, a food lab or um, an agricultural setting. So these are the three routes that I came up with um, based on my own experience and you know, the reason I made this video is because I felt like, you know, when I searched it up after the fact of having microbiology experience, I felt like a lot of the articles I saw online didn't really describe, you know, the difference, the different uh, aspects of being a microbiologist. You know, they would always say basic stuff like, oh, get a bachelor's degree, oh, maybe get a master's degree. But I felt like, you know, you kind of have to have these separate ideas in your mind and generally which route you want to take. Not saying you can't, you know, crisscross or change your mind or anything, but it's good to have an idea, you know, if you want to be in the clinical or healthcare setting, you know, you have to follow the requirements of the governing body in your country. You know, there's no getting around that, you know, you may have a bachelor's degree in something related to microbiology, but it's not a specific degree that they uh, acknowledge and accept, then it's actually not really any good. So then that's where the non-clinical route comes in, where that can help you out, you know, where they're not strict uh, when they're hiring in these, you know, pharmaceutical type settings, for example, uh, and what they're looking for. And then you have that very technical route, um, very academic, uh, you know, research route. And that's what I've, you know, delineated as the third one. So yeah, um, let me know what you think, you know, if there's any other ideas, but you know, these were, you know, three general ones I came up with and, you know, just trying to help people out you know, if they're planning to become a microbiologist and, you know, they're in high school, for example, or just starting university, you know, I think it's good to have, you know, this type of, you know, uh, understanding of, you know, what are your options in the future. So yeah, let me know what you think uh, in the comments below and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.